<clears throat> okay. So this next technique of integration is called integration by parts. So just like uh, as we were talking about substitution was a technique of integration, it was the opposite of the, the chain rule. Integration by parts undoes the product rule. So what is product rule? Quick refresher for two expressions, u and v. The derivative of u times v is u times v prime plus v times u prime. OK. Well, it's not immediately obvious how to undo this, since both sides of the formula have a derivative. So it's not clear. So here's what we do. On the left side, you actually have the derivative of the entire expression. So we know that when we take an integral, we're just going to get back the original thing. So if you integrate, so notice that I'm, so if you integrate one, if you integrate the left side of an equation, just like arithmetic, you have to integrate the right side of the equation. Okay. Uh, and like I said, integrating the derivative of something just gives you the original thing back. Um, the good thing that it is a function, I'm calling it some expression. So u times v is some expression. Okay. So you get this. Now I'm going to solve for one integral. So what we wind up with is this expression. The integral of u times v prime dx equals uv minus the integral of v times u prime dx. Okay. So, so far, every individual step should make sense, but you should be thinking, well, what good is this? So one more step before I talk about what this is good for. So I like using differentials. So I'm going to, I'm going to put this into the form where we're using differentials. So recall, for example, that we think of u prime as du dx. Uh, therefore, du, as we've seen before, is uh, just u prime dx. And similarly, dv is just v prime dx. So we've used this sort of technique before. Where did we use this before? In substitution, exactly. OK. So if you use this kind of notation, then we just sort of retranslate the last thing we wrote, and we get this. So the integral of u dv equals, oops, <laughs> sorry, I switched it. There we go. OK. uv minus the integral of v dv. Okay. And that's the formula. Well, so. We've got this equation, but again, just like, our, just like the original uh, formula had derivatives on both sides, this formula, or this equation, has integrals on both sides. That doesn't seem very helpful. Well, it would only be helpful if one of the integrals was much, much easier to do. And it turns out that that happens a lot. And that's why this is a useful technique. So let's take a look. So the integral of x times cosine x dx. So let me, quick, let me quickly make a comment on what you cannot do. What you cannot do is say, well, the integral of x is x squared over 2, and the integral of cos x is sine x. Can't do that. Just like you cannot do that with derivatives, similarly, you cannot do that with integrals. And if you don't believe that, just take the derivative and see what happens. It doesn't work nicely. OK. So what we need is a new technique of integration in order to work this out. So what I want to say is that this integral looks like, from our, uh, from our previous formula, the integral of u dv. So I'm going to choose u to be x and dv to be the rest, which is cos x dx. Now notice that for the rest of the formula, I'm also I'm going to need not only u, I'm going to need to say what du is. And not only do I need dv, I need to say what v is. So if u is x, then du is dx. 
And if dv is cos x dx, then v is sin x. And now we can just use this formula, uh, this equation, to write this as what it's equal to. So, it's, so this is equal to uv minus integral of v du, like it does in the formula, which is now this. x times sine x minus the integral of sine x dx. And what's nice about this? Yeah, this integral is now easy. And just in, ca just in case you're a skeptic, let's check it. So how do we check it? We take the derivative. So the derivative of that uh, here on x sine x, you just use the product rule. So you get sine, 1 times sine x plus x cos x minus sine x, cancel, cancel, you get x cos x. So we did something right. Um, OK, so now recall before I said personally I like using differentials. So I like using du and dv. Um, well, I mentioned that you can also use the prime notation. And, I, and there's the formula written up there for that as well. So what would this, so let me show you what this problem would look like using the prime notation. So instead, instead of saying uh, u and dv, you'd say u and v prime. And then you have to say what u prime is, you have to say what v is. So now when you rewrite it, you'd say this equals uv minus the integral of v u prime dx. Which is just, when you plug it in, you get this. And notice that the integral of sine x times 1 times dx is just the integral of sine x. So anyway, you get the same thing. So like I said, I prefer, differential, I prefer using differentials. Um, but for our purposes, both notations work just fine. So use whichever one you like. Let's see another example. Okay. The integral of arc 10 x dx. So arc 10 x is just one function, but it's a function that we've never seen before in terms of taking the integral. We know how to take the derivative of it, but we don't want to take the integral of it. So how do we do this? Well, once again, integration by parts helps us do this. So we make the following choices. u equals arc tan x and dv equals the rest, which is dx. So now we got to figure out, right, we need du and then we'll also need, we'll also need v. So if u equals arc tan x, the derivative du equals 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. And then if dv is dx, then v is just x. OK? So what does this tell us that this integral is equal to? Well, it's going to be uv minus the integral of v du, which is this. So again, just plugging in uh, uv is x r 10 x minus the integral of v du. v du is now uh, x times 1 over 1 plus x squared dx. Now, is that an integral that we can do? Yes. We have the u sub. Yeah, we can do a u sub and do this integral. So the u is the 1 plus x squared, and the du is 2x dx. But what are we trying to replace? We're trying to replace x dx. So 
Just do that. So this becomes the integral of, or one half, I'll plot the one half, integral of du over u. And the integral of, and that integral is? Ln of u. Um, and then u was 1 plus x squared. Um, so put it all together, and what do you get? The original piece, which was x times r tan x, minus this calculation, which is uh, minus 1 half ln of 1 plus x squared, and then always at the end plus c. Okay. So those are two examples of doing integration by parts. Any questions? Conceptually, you're starting with the integral of u v dx. U dv, which is, so to go back, So you could think of it either in terms of the, the prime notation or differential notation. So in, in differential notation, you're starting with the integral of u dv. In prime notation, you're starting with the integral of u v prime dx. And then we did this calculation from using the product rule, uh, yeah, from doing slash undoing the product rule in order to see what that's equal to. Which is this? Which is the which is the right side of the equation? Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, any other questions? Well, there should be one question that's absolutely burning in your mind, which is what the first, the very first line of the solution. U dv. It's magic. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so two questions. First of all, the main question with any technique of integration is when do you use it, right? Because we ne we're now starting to learn more than one technique. So we now know our basic techniques, like an just basic antiderivative. Plus, we now know substitution. Plus, we now know integration by parts. We're going to learn some other techniques as well. So when do you use this, te this particular technique? And then secondly, for this technique, how do I know which part is u and which part is dv? So it turns out for integration by parts, both of these questions have the same answer. Yes, Jeff. So we decide whichever is easier to integrate on the second form. But how? Do, not necessarily. So here we go. The integrators for when and how to do integration by parts are number one. There is a piece of the integral we would like to quote unquote differentiate away to make the integral e easier. Just like in the first example. Set u to be the part you want to differentiate away. So let's look back and see what that means. The integral of x cosine x. That integral will be so much easier if the x wasn't there. So look at what integration by parts did. When we did, did integration by parts, what was the integral that we eventually had to do? <coughs> this is the integral of sine x. So in a sense, we got rid of the x. And that's what integration by parts did. So that's, that's indicator number one for when you do integration by parts. Indicator number two. We don't know how to do the integral of the function that we're given, but we do know how to take the derivative. Then set u to be the part you know how to take the derivative of. Like this example. The integral of arctan x dx. I don't know anything about integrating arctan x. The only thing I know is how to take the derivative. So integration by parts lets you do that. You set u equal to r tan x, and you take the derivative, and you turn it into something dif different that you can work with. Um, and then also a sort of helpful rule is that when you choose your u and dv, make sure uh, when you choose make sure that when you choose dv, one of the first things you should check is to make sure that's something you can take the integral of. 
because the very first step, once you choose dv, is to make a v. So if dv is something you can't integrate, then it's, then it's a problem. So right now, I'm going to give you a nice little cheat sheet. Because I'm going to be very helpful. Yeah. So these are uh, some common integrals for parts. So we've already seen one or two of these. Uh, let's see. So which ones have we seen so far? We saw x cos x, for example. Um, so here it's, here it's in the general form. Uh, so if you had x cos x, we saw that we would let u be x. So this also works in general if you have like x to some power, cosine ax, for example. So now you can imagine something similar is going to happen if you have x to the n sine x, or sine ax. Um, and then similarly for x to the n, e to the ax. A is a constant. A is a constant, yes. A is a constant and b is a constant in these things. Okay. Uh, so anyway, so here are a couple different... Uh, categories of things. So this, uh, this would be a handy thing to keep by as you're working on problems to get used to spotting when do I use integration by parts. And again, remember, this is, just, this is a helpful cheat sheet. This isn't everything. It's just some common ones. Okay. So those are the basics of integration by parts. Um, oh, as you asked before, when you see an integral, if you can, uh, if it works, if integration by parts works out, it works like this. You think of the integral as the integral of u dv, and then you simply rewrite it. You choose your u and your dv, and you rewrite it as uv minus the integral of v du. And then if things have gone right, the integral of v du is something that you know how to handle. That's the basic idea of integration by parts. Next, there are one or two slightly more, slightly trickier things that we can do using integration by parts. First one, repeated integration by parts. Okay, so suppose you have the integral of x squared sine x dx. So first of all, why is this a candidate for integration by parts? You tell me. We want to take that x squared and differentiate it away. Because then we'll just have a trig function that we're going to integrate. Okay. Um, but since we want to differentiate away x squared, guess, oh guess, how many steps this is going to take. It's going to take two steps because we know about x squared. Right. Okay. So start off by saying u equals x squared and then dv equals sine x dx. Um, and then finish, uh, and then say we have to say what du and v is. So du is 2x dx, and then v is negative cos x. And now we rewrite the integral. So you get negative x squared cos x, and then minus the integral of what? Minus the integral of negative cos x times 2x dx. So like this. And so like I said, now what? Do it, again. do it again. So do it again, now what's our u? 2x. U is 2x. And dv equals everything else, which is negative cos x dx. Why took 2x? Can we not, I mean, essentially, it wouldn't change much, but can we just take out the 2? Yes. So a side comment is now naturally you know you can always manipulate constants so for example that two is a factor in there you could pull it out in front yes also you notice that you've got minus that well negative cos x that negative is really in front of the entire expression so you could pull the negative out okay so if you if you were if you were doing this then yeah you could actually make some algebraic simplifications in each step I'm skipping those for a moment because I want to make a point in a minute. Okay. So that being said, take your, in the unsimplified form, 
take your u to be 2x, take your dv like that. Now you need your du and you need your v, which works out like this. And once again, we rewrite the integral. But we have to do this very carefully. Because, uh, and when I say carefully, I mean carefully in the context of the entire calculation that we're doing. Because when we do repeated parts, you've got your initial, you've got your expression uv, then minus this integral. So everything that we're finding right now, we have to subtract all that. So I put it in these big brackets. So you got negative x squared cos x minus, in brackets, my new parts. My new parts is uh, uv, which is 2x, well, negative 2x sine x, and then minus integral of v du, which is now uh, negative 2 sine x dx. And now that is an integral that we know how to do. And then if you straighten out all the signs and the constants, you get that. Any questions? Okay. So, I left all the signs and the constants where they are to make a point. And the point is that doing it this way, it can be a little bit tricky to keep track of the signs and keep track of the constants. And especially, uh, heaven forbid you had to do this three times or four times. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to give you a shortcut. So if you're doing if you're repeating integration by parts, there is a shortcut way to write down the calculation. Now underneath this shortcut, what you're really doing is this, the calculation that we just did. But here's a shortcut way to write it down that makes it really nice. It's the table method. So again, same integral, the integral of x squared sine x dx. And you make the following table. You make three columns, one for sine, meaning plus or minus, u and all its derivatives, and then also v prime, your initial thing, and all its antiderivatives. And here we go. So we start out with, so remember our initial choice for u was x squared, so we start with that. Our initial choice for dv was sine x dx, um, but for this we just want the v prime part, so we have sine x. Okay. And here's how you make the answer. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, oh wait, I'm sorry, I forgot to say, once you have, excuse me, once you have u equals x squared, take the derivative, take the derivative, take the derivative. And keep going until you hit zero. Also, once you have v, you start with the v prime of sine x, keep taking antiderivatives. So the antiderivative of sine x is negative cos x, antiderivative of that is negative sine, antiderivative of that is cos x, and you can stop because on that row you have a zero. And the sign should alternate. So the sign should always start with plus, and then just go minus, plus, minus, blah, blah, blah. So it's like plus squared minus, minus, plus, minus, plus, 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 plus. For the sign, yes. Always start with plus? Always start with plus. For sign, for sign, and everything, you just want sign with minus. It doesn't, it doesn't depend on, on the function stuff, like the original function? No. no. Always start with plus for the sign. Always start with your original, your choice of u from your original integral. Always start with your v prime from your original integral. And then just go and make this chart. And stop and stop when you hit zero. Is this cosine, sine, plus, plus, is that the same? No, 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 no. Just do the thing I just said, which is start with v prime and then take antiderivatives. And that's it. 
So once you have made this chart, as I already said, you just go like this, like this, like this, and notice that the next one's gonna have is and and you multiply across that line. So the first one gives you, well, plus x squared times negative cos x. So that will just give you a negative x squared cos x. And then the next one is a negative 2x, negative sine x. So negative negative will give you a positive 2x sine x. And then positive 2 cos x. And as you'll see, that's the answer. Of course, plus c. That's neat and it's helpful, right? Um, okay. So actually, yeah. So I want to re-emphasize one point, which is, as I said, your original, your original problem, you have to think of it as the integral of u dv, or if you like prime notation, u times v prime dx. Notice that that doesn't leave room for extra stuff. Like if you're building a kit and you have a couple screws left over, you just throw out the screws. No, you can't do that. Everything has to either be part of the U or part of the DV. You have to split it up. You can't throw away what you don't like. Okay. Uh, so let's talk about this one. Integral of x to the fifth cos x dx. So first of all, why is this a candidate for parts? Right. We want to differentiate away x to the fifth, and therefore, what's our choice? So u is going to be x to the fifth. And then du is everything else. Or I like writing v prime, because we don't, we don't need the dx when we write down our final answer. So we just think of it as a v prime. So let's do it. Uh, so what do we what do we do? <laughs> okay. U and V prime. Okay. Uh, so what do I write here? Yeah, so it's, it's easier, I think, to do one column at a time. So the sign goes plus, minus, plus, minus. Okay, oh, I'm going to need, darn it, I'm going to need one more. Yeah. Okay, I'll work this out later. Okay. All right, and then you, what's my you? x to the fifth. And so what happens here? Five x to the fourth. So I'm gonna need one more. Yep. Okay, and now, right, so what was V prime? Yeah, remember, this, this is your original choice, okay? So now, And now let's make the answer. X to the fifth, sine x. Which is going to be a plus because it's all sine. 
Right, we're gonna have negative five x to the fourth negative cos x. So negative negative will just give us a plus. Okay, next. Right. So it's going to be plus and negative, so we can just make it a minus. Okay. Sixty x squared cos x. Totally just ran out of room. Okay. Plus one twenty x sine x. Right. Plus, yeah. <laughs> okay, and, and that's the answer. So, a quick note, notice how much, e how easy this is with the table method. Okay, again, assuming integration by parts is the right thing to do, notice how easy this is. <laughs> Okay. Especially easy with trig. Sine and cosine. Yeah. Okay. You can check the derivative of that entire equation, right? Yes. So you could check it by doing the derivative of this entire thing. Now, when you take the derivative, let's, let's just let's put on our clever hats. When you take the derivative of this thing, guess what's going to happen? A lot of stuff is going to cancel, All right, and you'll wind up with the answer. Okay. So. All right. so any questions about integration by parts repeated, in particular, using the table method? OK. So now we're going to see, right, now we're going to see another advanced use of integration by parts. It, we're going to use repeating, but something funky is going to happen. Let's check it out. So suppose we have the integral of e to the 2x sine x dx. Um, now it's not immediately obvious that this is a candidate for integration by parts. Um, because there's nothing we want to differentiate away and there's nothing that we don't know how to take the integral of. No individual part anyway. But what we're going to see is that this is exactly one of the candidates using this special t using this special Advanced technique of integration by parts. Okay, so I'll show you what happens. So u, so we're going to split it up in the obvious way because it's basically got two functions multiplied by each other. So u equals e to the 2x, and dv equals sine x dx. So then that gives us a du. Take the derivative, a 2 pops out, so 2 e to the 2x dx, and v is just going to be negative cos x. Now if you do this, this gives you uh, uv minus integral of v du. You plug it in and you get this. Uh, e to the 2x cos x with a negative in front minus the integral of v du, so it's negative cos x, 2 e to the 2x dx. Okay. So what I'm telling you is that now we're going to do it again. So once again, u equals e to the, so in this new integral, u equals e to the 2x, and then the dv equals cos x. So I think here I pulled out the minus minus and made it a plus and I pulled out the 2. Okay. So once again, du is going to be 2e to the 2x. And in this case, dv is cos x, so v cos x dx, I mean. And then v equals sine x. 
So what does this give you? So if you are careful about your signs and your constants, like I said before, you wind up with this. Bring down the original negative e to the 2x cos x. Now, like I said, I made the minus minus a plus when I put the 2 in front. So I get a plus 2 of this thing. So what is this thing? It's my new uv minus the integral of e du. So my new one is e to the 2x sine x minus the integral of what? 2 sine x e to the 2x dx. That's just my v du. The, oops. Uh, okay. Right. So, but now remember this. Uh, let's rewrite this. So we've been calculating that our original integral equals blah, 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 all this. Let's put it back together, back together as a full equation. So what we really have is the original integral, the uh, integral of e to the 2x sine x dx equals this thing that we found. Uh, and what I did here was I distributed 2 uh, through, over the parentheses. So I get negative e to the 2x cos x plus 2 e to the 2x sine x and then minus for the integral of e to the 2x sine x dx. And now what can we do? You can treat the entire integral that we're solving for like one big variable. So what you've got is blah equals something plus something minus 4 blah. And just solve for it. So how do you solve for it? Get all your blahs to one side. So 5 times the integral of e to the 2x sine x dx equals this bit that's left over. And now to get the original integral, you just have to divide by 5. Now this feels like cheating. It feels like we never actually solved the original integral. But that's OK. We found out what it equals, and that's all we need to do. These are techniques of integration. And these are just ways of finding out what the integral equals. This one does it in a very unexpected way. So notice that when you're going to use repeat, so typically when does repeating, uh, when do we use repeating parts um, to make an equation? You do that when you have things like e to the ax and the sine of bx, because those are things that cycle, and you'll never, you'll never quote unquote differentiate away, but they will cycle back to being the same thing. Does that make sense? OK. So this is a third and special category of when you use integration by parts. In particular, you use repeating integration by parts. And in particular, again, you're actually going to make an equation. Okay. So two. Uh, two comments about this method. Let me see. So first of all, always pick u as the same thing. Now remember, so we're repeating, so you always have a choice of what's my u, what's my dv. So be careful, always pick u as your same thing. What if you didn't do, so notice that, how did, what did we pick u to be in each step here? In the first step, u was e to the 2x. In the second step, u was e to the 2x. 
Now, what would happen if you didn't do that? What would happen if you switched it? If you switch, if in the first step u is e to the two x, but in the second step uh, u was the other thing and dv was e to the two x, you know what you do? You integrate and get back where you started. So you undo the thing you just did. So don't do that. You don't want to go back to square one. Keep making u the same thing, and it will work out. Okay. So. Another thing is that you cannot use the table. Why? Because it doesn't give an equation. Let's see. Well, or what I should say is if you use the table, you have to be very clever about how you use it. You have to be paying attention to what like, the resulting integral is, and you can't really keep track of that using the table, because the table doesn't spit out an integral. It just spits out all the UVs. So you really can't use the table there. So yeah, like I said, there are some advanced uses of integration by parts. This one, as you can see, is a pretty tricky one. So let's review. Integration by parts undoes the product rule, but the way it undoes it is in this very kind of slick way. It really gives us an equation. Um, and there, are two, there are two different notations for writing that equation. There's the prime notation, and then there's the differential notation. I like the differential notation. You can use either way. When and how do we use integration by parts? The first simple case we saw is when there's something you'd like to differentiate away, and then that's going to be your u. The second one is if you have an expression, uh, you don't know how to take the integral of it, but you do know how to take the derivative of it. Make that your u, and then the rest dv. And here are, here's the cheat sheet for common integrals by parts. Now let's actually look back at that cheat sheet and understand which of these lines has to do with this, that last technique, making an equation that we just talked about that was so tricky. The last line. E to the ax sine bx and e to the ax cos bx. These are basically two special cases where you're going to want to use repeated integration by parts to make an equation. And that's the summary. So now would be a good time to practice some problems.